presentation that uh, you might want to check out sometime on the web page, Cure International. Um, I ask uh, Roger if we were under a time restraint, because I never uh, know for sure what, exactly what's going on. He said, well, there, there was a game at 3 o'clock that he wanted to watch. <clears throat> <laughs> I remember the preacher that um, was preaching as a guest lecturer in a church in New York. And as they were meeting ahead of time, the pastor that served that church said, now you will be done at 12 o'clock but didn't tell any reasons. And uh, the pastor that was visiting was kind of, and nobody tells me when to stop. And so 11.55 came, 12 o'clock came, 12.05 came, and he kept going. And soon people in the congregation just got up and walked out. And that continued for about the next 15 minutes till there was very few left. Afterwards, the preacher said, I thought I told you to be done by 12. And he said, but what happened? He said, well, all the people commute by train here. And if they don't catch that one o'clock, there's not another one till six. Has nothing to do with you. It's their lifestyle. And at churches in Texas, I understand, if if the Cowboys are playing, adjust their schedule accordingly back before the game can be taped and all that. So So timing of worship is important. As I think back about all the stuff that was going on when I was here in the 80s, and all the stuff going on today, I notice nothing changes except me. Um, Someone tells me I'm going to be 80 next month. I just can't believe that, because my wife is still so young. It just makes no sense to me. we're in, we're in pretty good health for the condition we're in, and that's good. Um, scripture reading uh, refers to the stone the builders rejected. And I want you to think about building blocks for, build, for buildings, but also building blocks for your life. And what it is that uh, has made you who you are. There's a Chinese parable, which I've always appreciated, which goes like this. A man loses a horse, and the neighbors come by and say, Oh, that's too bad. And the man that lost the horse said, Well, let's wait and see. Two days later, the horse comes back with two other horses. And the neighbors come back and say, Man, that is really good luck. And the man said, Well, let's just wait and see. The next day, the man's son went out and tried to ride one of the horses, got thrown off, broke his leg. The neighbors came by and said, that's too bad, your son broke his leg. And the man said, well, let's just wait and see. A couple days later, the army came by looking for volunteers to go off to war. And the people said, well, that was really good luck. And on and on the story goes, because we never know for sure how things play out. But too often, all people, and especially we Christians, forget who's in charge. And when events happen in our lives, we sometimes jump to conclusions that it's always bad. I think it was in daily uh, room, or one of the devotional ones that I read, a mother innocently asked her son, what are you watching on TV? What are you searching for? And the son replied, not fully hearing the question, I'm looking for a version of myself that does not make decisions based on fear. So often our lives are overwhelmed by fear, fear of what's ahead. And I'm very grateful for my parents and for their upbringing with our family. I don't think any of us grew up being afraid of thunderstorms. In fact, we would go out on the porch and enjoy a good thunderstorm. I watched the clouds form, and I still enjoy doing that. Now, that doesn't mean I don't get concerned when they say a tornado might be in one of those. But overall, I don't live in fear of them. And as I reflect back, and that's one of the nice things about getting older, you you have the chance to become the philosopher. And you can look back and reminisce about your life. 
And as I think about myself and my upbringing, and at age 18, not knowing anything, went off to Asbury College in Kentucky, not knowing a soul, not knowing what I was getting into. But I had no fear. I appreciate that about being young. And then a few years later, my wife and I head off to Atlanta, Georgia, to go to seminary. No job, no place to live, and our belongings in the back seat of the car was the best time of our lives. That was before children came. <laughs> but if fear had overwhelmed us, we never left, would have left home. So I'm asking again, what are the foundation stones in your life? Now, there's a picture of foundation stone that's around the corner here, if I have my directions right, of when this church was built. Now, th now that church had a lot of fear about what was ahead. And there were the naysayers that said, it can't be done, we'll never pay for it. But they left the old building downtown and moved here. When I was here, we got into another building project. <clears throat> and time after time said, what if Gerber goes under? There's no way we can pay for that. But I'd heard enough from previous times where the church had thought about doing something and never move forward, that we kept pushing the project. Foundation stones are basic in our life, and one of the things I remember, <clears throat> and I'm thinking about foundation stones and foundation walls, <clears throat> is when they were doing the basement and headed out that direction, that they had to tear through the foundation wall. And if you're downstairs and go out the front exit off into the choir room area, there's a big wall you go through, and that foundation wall is about that thick. They didn't cut through that in one day. They spent several days shaking the whole building to create that exit out of there. What kind of foundation stones do you have in your life? As I think about what's become center for me, I realize that scripture, as I've read it through the years, as I've preached from various texts, but even more in my devotional life, I keep coming back to several things. I headed off for college with Jeremiah 33.3 on my heart. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And that stayed with me for many years. A while back, someone asked me, as we met, it was a pastor for Salvation Army, we were just getting acquainted, and he said, what's your favorite verse? And I thought for a moment, and I said, depends on the day. I no longer have one verse <clears throat> that my whole life revolves around. It depends on what I'm going through. John 10:10, 10, 10. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Psalm 69, 13 is one that I struggle with every now and then, because there's times in my life where I pray to God and nothing happens. And I found that Psalm 69 speaks to that. As the psalmist said, Lord, answer my prayer at an acceptable time. And that one, he always comes through on. It may not be in my timing. It may not be the answer that I would like, but an answer soon comes. More recently, the scripture for, the, from Psalm 27, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And if I have any input on what the scripture is for my memorial service, it's gonna be Psalm 27 because I've found Psalm 27 ministers to me every morning. I also have leaned more on Psalm 51 as just a way to begin the day which says, create in me a clean heart, forgive my sins, and restore to me the joy 
of my salvation. That joy of salvation is something we tend to lose at times, and it's uh, something that needs to be restored in most of our lives. Foundation stones. How many do you have and what do you build on? And every now and then, rather than just read Psalm 23, it probably would be good to study the theology of Psalm 23. One of my frustrations in life is that people sometimes fall away because they don't understand how God could do this. But Psalm 23 simply says, God walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Doesn't prevent it, but he's with us. Through the years, the old philosopher in me has learned not to get too uptight about politics. Doesn't matter whether the Democrat wins or a Republican. The economy is going to do what the economy does. It doesn't matter whether one's in party or the other. We're going to have war and not have war. Things happen outside of our real ability. Another stone that I think is important in our life is a keystone. I want you to imagine an archway that's, that's built with blocks. <clears throat> in building that, they, they put up sides on the edge of that arch because it's going to come in on itself. And so there's things to hold those stones in place. And then up near the top, that top stone is called the keystone. And you notice the shape of it, how it's shaped so that it locks everything in. I think in building our lives, we not only need a good foundation, but we need the presence of the Holy Spirit that holds everything together. The keystone is one of those things that supports us, keeps other things in place, and keeps the arch from moving and caving in on itself. We need to be reminded of who we serve. Go back and read the Gospels again and read how Jesus came to save the lost, to tend his flock, to go in search of one's lost and those lost sheep and coin, he came to forgive our sins. He came to see good in all people. He came to provide life eternal. Now, how in the world did we take those words and come up with, if I serve God, I'll never lose my job. I'll never lose my pension. I'll always live far beyond my means because God's going to bless us. One of my disappointments in life, which I may have referred to, is the number of people who turn away from God when tragedy or death visit them. Somehow they expected God to give them a life insurance policy that protected so that bad things will not happen. When the bottom falls out, now if you serve God, it's never going to fall out, but I haven't found that. I have found that people I love die before their time. I have found that people that have lived a good life sometimes have tragedy. When the bottom falls out, we need that keystone to keep it all in place and allows us to work through it. We need the importance of the foundation stones and all of those things that continued to help us to build. <clears throat> and the church is one of those blocks, I think, that's very important. And how we have missed it in the last year. Now, people who are huggers come to church to hug. Don't tell me I have to stay six feet away. Don't tell me I can't shake hands and get up close and say, how are you doing? That's what the church has provided us for years. And now we have to step back and we realize how much that meant to us. Neighbors and friends, Bible studies, on and on that list goes. That helps us keep 
building blocks in place in our lives. But we also have the promises of God that uh, we need to check on. When I was 10 years old, you can switch to the final frame there if you want. Ten years old, I remember doing chores early, and I said to Dad, what's going on? Well, we're going to church tonight. Now, we, we were a good Methodist family, but we only went to church once a day. Going to evening service was over and beyond. But we went to church, and it's one of those evenings that I've never forgotten because of what happened. There was a couple of people visiting there who were providing special music. Virgil and Blanche Brock. And they shared an experience about a hymn that they had written recently. It seems they were professors and teachers and on staff at Winona College down in Indiana. And one evening they gathered with friends to watch the sunset over the lake. And it was one of those beautiful sunsets. And they started to talk about the colors and the changing, changing scenes and what it did on the waters. And on and on they talked. And one of the individuals that was with him was a blind man. And soon he spoke up and said, I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful sunset. And they paused and said, no, wait a minute, you're blind. You can't see the sunset. He said, but I, I see it in your description. And I see beyond the sunset. After folks left, Virgil sat down and began to put to pen verses to a hymn known as Beyond the Sunset. It's not in our hymn note today, but it's in, it's in some of the old ones. I thought about Checking in with you, and you can play a little bit. Beyond the sunset, oh glorious deity, down with our Savior, life is begun. The words came out that, you know, it's not just the sunset, but what's beyond that? Beyond the sunset, oh blissful morning, when with our Savior heaven's begun, earth's toiling ended, oh glorious dawning, Beyond the sunset, when his wife put the words to music, and they were out on tour, going to various churches, introducing the hymn, and just enjoying the message it has. One final conclusion, and that's one of the problems I have with all the years of experience. I've got a lot of conclusions, but I'll, I'll stick to this one, okay? In our, in our park in Florida, there's some old trees. And one, it was noted once that one of the old trees on the one outside perimeter is a live oak that's probably 400 years old. Now, if you go back 400 years, that gets you into Columbus finding the Mer America and a few other things. And to think about this tree surviving hurricanes, we're in the middle of Florida, so it's not quite as bad. But it's not a pretty tree. Life has been tough on it. Some of the branches have been cut off or broken. But this thing is humongous, and it comes up and starts leaning immediately out over the road. And think about all the storms and turmoil that tree's gone through. I also note that each year, there's new leaves that come out. Each year, there's roots that go deeper. And I would like that to be the case for each of us. No matter how old we get or no matter what life brings our way, that each year, we put out new growth. And our roots go deeper because of the building blocks in our lives. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you will be the foundation 
on which we build our lives. May my door be wide enough that I may be welcoming, inviting others to grow with me. May my door be narrow enough to keep out what is not good. May I build no walls that keep anyone out, but build your kingdom together with all whom you give me as brothers and sisters, valuing all who are part of my life. May I live in such a way that those who trespass against me, who hurt me, may also know my forgiveness and generosity as I know yours. Surround us with your love and shield us from all harm, we pray. In the name of Christ, amen. It's been a joy to be with you. May God continue to bless this church. May the Lord God continue to walk with you and go before you, and may you always sense the presence of God Almighty. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen.